Hello and welcome to a new video on the Cryptography for Everybody channel. In this video, we will answer a question that several people ask me. And the question is, what makes more sense? Does it make more sense to first encrypt a file and then pack it, for instance, using WinZip? Or does it make more sense to first zip a file or pack it and then encrypt the file? To answer the question, we will use Cryptool2 and we will encrypt and zip several files and we will have a look at the file sizes. And we will prepare some Cryptool2 workspaces to do so. I created a lab folder here and in this lab folder I have three subfolders. I have a bitmap data subfolder, a JPEG data subfolder and a text data subfolder. Let's first go to the bitmap data. Here we have a bitmap. It's a high resolution photo of a forest. And now let's first have a look at the size. So we have here details and we see it's about six megabytes. So we have 6,076 kilobytes. So now let's just make a zip out of it. So we add to archive here, I use WinRA. I say zip and for compression, I want the best algorithm. Okay. And we come from six megabyte to 4.7 megabyte with the bitmap file. A bitmap file is an uncompressed image file, you can say. So instead of having a bitmap file, we could use a JPEG and we also have a JPEG. We will later have a look at the JPEG file. So a non-encrypted bitmap file, we can compress here in our example to 4,760 kilobyte zip file. Now we go back to Crypto2 and we create a workspace and we want to encrypt the file. And I will use the AES cipher, which is our today's encryption standard for symmetric ciphers. Then we need a file input because we want to encrypt the file and read the file, of course. And we need a file output. And we need, of course, a cryptographic key. And since we don't want to decrypt these, I will just use a randomly generated key. So I use a random number generator to generate a random key. And we now set up all of our components here. First of all, we want to have the bitmap data. So we have forest bitmap, forest.bmp, then as output file. I want to have forest encrypted and we can also say, or no, we, we, we remove the file ending, forest encrypted or forest BMP encrypted. And now we need to set up the AES. We want to encrypt, we use 256 bit mode and we want to have cipher block chaining. And then we need 32 bytes for the key and we just encrypt it by pressing play. The AES encrypted our file, we stop it and we go back to our lab folder. And here we can see that the encrypted file, the encrypted forest.bmp has exactly the same size as the forest BMP. And that's clearly because um, it's not zipped right now. Now we want to zip this file. So we add to archive and we want to have zip and again the best compression algorithm. And we just say OK. And now as we can see all the three files have nearly the same size. So zipping or packing an encrypted file which is which has been encrypted using AES in case of the bitmap does not make any sense. So let's go to our next file. Now we have JPEG data and JPEG is a compressed image format. So this JPEG has now 544 kilobyte size. And let's zip this. Also zip, best algorithm. And as we can see, we, we nearly get the same size. So a JPEG is a highly compressed image and 
When we zip this file, we get the same size. Now we also do the same with encryption here. So we open now our JPEG, forest JPEG, and as output here, we use forest JPEG encrypted. Save that and press play again. And now we encrypted the JPEG file. Go back to our folder. We have an encrypted JPEG file, which has the same size. And now we encrypt this, add to archive, zip, OK. And we see, of course, an encrypted, already compressed image that we zip again has clearly the same size. So we have now encrypted two types of data. And later in this video, I want to have a look in more detail on these different files. And in fact, I want to compute the entropy of these files. But first, let's have a look at our third data type. We have text data here. So I have here a text file of 286 kilobytes. And these are, I think, four or five different books from the Gutenberg library. That's a um, web page where you can download um, free books. And I concatenated all these text files and put them into one text file. And this I want to zip right now. So we want to add to archive, zip, compression best. And we see text can be compressed. And the compression rate here is really good because we come from 286 kilobyte to only 89 kilobyte. Now let's do the same again with the AES. We encrypt the file, text data, text. As output, I want to have text encrypted, save, and we execute the AES again. Stop this, and we go back to the folder. And here we see that the text encrypted, of course, has the same size as the unencrypted text file. And now we do the same again, add to archive, we zip this, compression mode is again best, okay. And we have an encrypted text and of course it has the same size. So what we can see here right now is that zipping should be done before we encrypt because when we encrypt something, we can obviously not zip this anymore. But why can't we reduce the size of this? So we go back to our bitmap data and I want to create a new workspace here. And in that workspace, we need a file input that we need for loading a file. Then we use the cost function component because the cost function component can compute the entropy here. I want to have the entropy, bytes to use, really huge number, so it should use all the bytes from the file. To connect a file input with a cost function, we need a converter because the cost function wants a byte array. So we connect the file input with the converter and the converter with the cost function. And we change here to byte array. And then we want to see the result here in a text output. We mark this, we spread this horizontally. And this here is our unencrypted file. Then we want to have the zip file and we want to have the encrypted file. And for comparison, I want to have this again here, but this time I want to have a random number generator here. And I think we can Oh, does it deliver a byte array? Okay, we can remove the converter. And to compare this, I want to have random numbers. And now we have a look at our file size. Our file size is about 6,000 kilobytes. That's 6,000 and again 1,000 bytes, roughly the same size as randomly generated bits. And I want to have a, ra a random number crypto service provider to get good random numbers. Okay, here we want to open the bitmap data. We have the forest bitmap, which is a non-encrypted file. Then we want to open the forest zip. 
And then we want to open the encrypted file. And now, before I start this, let's think what may happen or what should we see. The unencrypted file here should have a very low entropy since it's compressible. And when you had a look or when you have a look at my video about entropy, we know that um, the lower the entropy, the better for, en uh, for zipping the file. With the zip, the entropy should be very high. With the encrypted file, it should be also very high. And random numbers should, of course, have also a very high entropy. So let's press play and see what happens. And what do we see here? The unencrypted file here, the forest bitmap, has an entropy about seven. Meaning, let's have a look, it's all the same, yeah? Meaning, on average, we need seven bits per byte or per um, information to store uh, information in the file. And with the zip file here, we have an entropy that's about eight. That means we cannot compress this file anymore. The same applies here to the encrypted file. And that's why we cannot, encrypt, uh, cannot zip the encrypted file because it already has entropy close to 8-bit. Meaning to store a byte, we need 8-bit. Yes, we know that the byte has 8-bit, so we cannot compress it. And the same applies to the random number here. It's about eight, meaning when we want to compress random data, we, we want to compress random bytes, we need as much bytes as we generated with our random number generator. And here we see with bitmaps, we can save a byte or uh, save a bit per byte. Now I want to stop this here and I want to change this to the text. I think with JPEG, it doesn't make any sense. With JPEG, or we can do this also with JPEG. Let's, let's do it with JPEG. We have the forest JPEG, the unencrypted one. We have here the zip and we have the encrypted. And let's see, my assumption is that the entropy of all these different files should be nearly the same. Let's press play <laughs> and here we see it. A JPEG file has an entropy about or nearly about eight. As we saw, I think we could remove or we, we could shrink the, the file size about one kilobyte. And it was, I don't know, what, what, do, what did we have? 800 kilobyte or so? Four, 544 kilobyte to 443, uh, 543 kilobytes. So we could uh, shrink the file size of about one kilobyte. So that's, that's nearly nothing. And we see with the encrypted, we have also about eight the entropy. So this means that all the three files are already uh, compressed as possible, you would say. So, and now we could ask our question, or let, let's first have a look at the, at the third file. So I copy this again, and we want to have a look at text files here. So we open here the text data, so the text, then we open uh, the zip, we open the encrypted file, and of course, for comparison, the random data. Now let's press, press play here. And here we can see that text data has a very low entropy compared to <laughs> the zip file or the encrypted file. And this is why we can easily compress text data. You don't need as much bits to store text as it uses with the ASCII encoding, and that means we can easily en uh, zip this file. Of course, when we encrypt the text file before zipping, we increase the entropy of the file, as we can see here with the encrypted file. And when we want to encrypt a file with an entropy of about eight, we cannot zip this. And uh, same, of course, here with the random number again, random, the random number generator should always have an entropy of about eight. Yeah, and I think this is really interesting and this should answer the question if we should first encrypt or first zip a file. So it always makes sense to first zip a file and then encrypt the file. Because when we encrypt a file, we increase the entropy of the data because that's the that's basic idea behind our modern encryption algorithms. An encrypted file or an encrypted text 
should have the same properties or should as look as the same as randomly generated data. And that we can see here. Our random number and our random text, uh, our encrypted text here have the same entropy. So we cannot pack or zip random data and we cannot pack or zip encrypted data. That's a basic idea of our modern cryptographic algorithms. So when you need to pack a file and you of course want to encrypt the file, you first pack the file and then you encrypt the file. Otherwise, uh, packing won't work. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to have a look in this video. I think this was an interesting experiment and I hope this answers the question if first zip or first um, encipher or encrypt a file. And yeah, I, I hope you like this video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I also would be really happy if you do so. This really helps me. This really helps to grow this channel and make Crypto2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.